Where do polyunsaturated fatty acids come from and how can we use them? So the first thing that we need to understand is that when a cow is eating, she's ingesting feeds that contain lipids. These lipids can be in the form of a triglyceride, meaning that there is a glycerol, which would be represented at this vertical molecule here, and fatty acids that are attached to it. So the first step in the rumen is the hydrolysis. During this step, the fatty acid will be detached from the glycerol and become free fatty acid in the rumen. The second step is the bihydrogenation. And during this step, the unsaturated fatty acid will become saturated by the attachment of hydrogen to the carbon molecules. These saturated fatty acids will then exit the rumen and move into the intestine, where they will then move to the mammary gland, where the synthesis of de novo will occur. So looking a little more closely into step one, the hydrolysis. Um, so again, this is the a triglyceride here. So the first step is detaching the glycerol from the fatty acid. Then this glycerol will become an energy source for the cow and the fatty acid will become free. The first one that we have here is a saturated fatty acid, meaning that there are no double bounds. This one here in the middle is a monounsaturated fatty acid. There's only one double bound. And the one at the bottom here is a polyunsaturated fatty acid. There are two double bounds here. So the first step is to detach the fatty acid from the glycerol. Looking into step two, which is the bihydrogenation, uh, if we look at this molecule here, this is a polyunsaturated fatty acid. Uh, it's a C182. So the two is for the two double bounds. So if we look here in the middle, Bihydrogenation means that the double bound will be undone, so removed from the fatty acid. So in the rumen, the bugs will attach hydrogen to the carbon molecule and they will undo the, the double bound like this. So this is a document that you can find on our website that summarizes bihydrogenation that occurs in the rumen. So if you ever need uh, to use this tool, you can go on our website and download it. So again, like the, the bihydrogenation is the process of undoing double bounds by attaching hydrogen to have saturated fatty acid that will then move to the intestine and into the mammary gland to produce de novo fats. So how to understand polyunsaturated? Um, this is really our approach. This is how we use polyunsaturated to make assessment on farms. So it's really divided into two categories. The first one is uh, when we have high de novo, we don't really look at polyunsaturated that much. When de novos are high, we assume that the rumen is healthy um, as, as the de novo really reflect rumen health, right? So every, if everything is right in terms of de novo level, we're satisfied with the level that they are. Uh, the one thing that we can do is confirm the production level and just make sure that the objectives of the producers are reached and that the level of production is satisfying. But the other scenario is when de novo are low, and this is where polyunsaturated become really interesting. Again, this will be done in two steps. So the first one, when we have low de novo and we have polyunsaturated that are below average. So what we're thinking is that there are not many double bounds for, found in milk fat. So we're thinking that the rumen is working really well. The bihydrogenation is really occurring in the rumen, broken down these double bounds. Uh, so it seems that it's working, but it, the, the bug seems to be lacking nutrients maybe. So this is one of the hypotheses that we, uh, that we look into when polyunsaturated are below average. It means that bihydrogenation seems to be working well in the rumen, but we suspect that maybe there's a lack of nutrients for the bugs to really optimize the novel's uh, production. So uh, when we lack nutrients, we look at MUN. Uh, MUN is a, a data that we're kind of used to looking at. So when we have high MUNs, uh, our hypothesis is that maybe we are lacking uh, fermentable energy in the rumen. So if MUNs is high and we are into this scenario here, we might try to add a little bit of ground corn or some source of energy like that that will feed rumen bugs uh, to see if we can optimize de novo production. When MUN is low, uh, our other hypothesis is that maybe we're lacking degradable protein. So the rumen buds need both protein and energy in order to optimize uh, the fermentation in the rumen. So this is how really we uh, use polyunsaturated when they are below average with a low level of de novo. 
On the other hand, when we have low de novo and high polyunsaturated, meaning that they are above average, we suspect that there are still lots of double bound uh, found in milk fat. So we think that the bihydrogenation might not be occurring the way that it should be. So it seems like there is a poor rumen function going on in that scenario. So if the cows just went on to pasture, well, they will be eating lots of fresh grass and they might eat lots of it, meaning that the polyunsaturated might go up. In this scenario, it's normal that the polyunsaturated go above average. But if you're not in a scenario where cows are going to pasture um, and polyunsaturated are above average, again, in combination with low de novo level, well, we think that maybe some of, one of our hypotheses is that um, maybe there's a little bit of rumen acidosis going on and there's, or there is an excess of fat in the ration. So here's a little list of things that you can validate. You can look at the fiber level, making sure that there's enough effective fiber in that ration. Uh, avoid having excess fat from feeds, so oil, oil seeds or oils coming from the ration. There can, there can also be management factors that affect the cows like this, so sorting or feeding feed bunk competition, and make sure that cows have access to ration at all time. So this chart here, you can find it on our website. It's a really similar chart that you can go on and download if you want to use, uh, uh, use this information. So polyunsaturated fatty acid, uh, one warning that we want to give is to not over, over interpret that, uh, that those fatty acids. Um, if we look at the scale here, uh, you see that the scale is really, really small. So if you go from this line here to this one, it's an increase of 0.02, which means like we're really looking at low level uh, of polyunsaturated fatty acid. So the way that we look at it is either we are on average, so here there's a little bit of an increase at the end of March, but we really are flirting with the average. So uh, we consider that average. Um, and then you have above or below average to use polyunsaturated as a combination with the de novo when you try to make assessment on farms. So again, um, remember that we are working with bulk tank milk. We are not looking at individual cow data. So if you come to uh, an understanding that there might not be rumen acidosis in the whole herd, well, remember that some cows might be at risk if they are eating risky ration where there can be a lot of sorting, uh, large volumes of top dress that are given to really high producing cows. So it's not because we make hypothesis in the bulk tank, at the bulk tank level, that there are no cows at risk in that barn. So it's just something to keep in mind when you're looking at polyunsaturated fatty acid.